A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway prairie tank. This is part three and the episode is called Making the Regulator Tube Fit the Boiler. In a perfect world, the hole in the boiler would be one inch in diameter, the same as the brass tube, which as you can see, is one inch in diameter. But unfortunately, the bush on the back of the boiler is slightly under one inch in diameter, so what am I going to do about this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is to remove this part. This is the flanged end that sits on the back head. And generally have a look at the way the regulator in the tube is constructed. As you can see on the flange, there is some impact damage. Maybe this occurred when the previous owner of the boiler threw it across the room in a rage because it won't fit in the boiler. This part of the regulator assembly fits OK on the back head flange, and it's large enough to allow me to machine some off to get rid of the damaged part. The only problem that I can really see is that the 1 inch diameter brass tube doesn't fit into the hole in the boiler. I cleaned up the end of the brass tube using the belt sander just to make sure it wasn't just some damage at the end, but no, it doesn't fit. A few years ago, via the auction site that we all know and love called eBay, I bought a full set of these. They are expanding reamers. Very useful tools to have in one's workshop, especially for jobs like this. You can change the diameter of the reamer by moving the two threaded collars forwards or backwards. And each of the reamers in the set have a specific range. The range of this particular reamer is just below one inch to just above one inch. I always find that when I work with copper it needs plenty of lubrication, hence the oiling of the reamer. For the first pass the reamer is adjusted so it's only just touching the sides of the bush. And even though that statement is a perfect example of a girlfriend joke, I won't use one in this instance. This job took quite a while. Each time I withdrew the reamer, I made it a little bit bigger. And after the reamer had been passed through the bush about ten times, look what happens. The brass tube goes through the bush very well. I've actually made it slightly larger than one inch diameter. Because a small copper tube, which fastens into the end of the large brass tube, doesn't line up perfectly at the front end of the boiler. The part that I showed you earlier, which is the regulator gland fitting, will have its own gasket and it will be bolted to the boiler flange using eight bolts. So this is going to be okay, it will seal fine. The misalignment of the back head bush and the wet header bush is only very slight, but the problem is magnified by the length of the brass tube and the copper tube in the end of it. It is possible to realign the boiler bushes. Even though I've done jobs like this many times, I do not recommend doing it because basically you have to distort the rear bush by inserting a one inch diameter steel bar into the bush and basically bending it into the correct position. But I'm not going to do that in this case because the misalignment is fairly minimal. What you've just seen me do is tighten up all the countersunk bolts that hold the internal assembly in the brass tube. And now it's time to fit the regulator gland fitting back to the tube. You will notice that the impact damage has gone because I've remachined the part. Time to have a look at the front tube plate. Here you can see the copper tube inside the boiler, and I need to persuade this to come through the hole. And for that I used a Phillips screwdriver, and here is the copper tube sticking out of the end of the boiler. As you can see it's not in the centre at all, but that's because there's a little bit of play now on the rear bush, which allows me to move the position of the main tube up or down slightly. Also the small copper tube is too long and needs shortening. Time to fit this to align the tube. So what is it? It's the main steam feed to the regulator. This small but important component takes the steam from the highest point in the boiler, which is within the steam dome. That's a sexy looking bit on the top of every steam locomotive boiler. On express engines though it's usually not quite so tall, but on tank engines it's usually very large. At the moment this steam pipe's a little bit too long, because when I put the inner dome in position, it just sits on top of the brass tube. The steam dome on a steam locomotive that everyone is used to seeing is just a cover, and on a miniature locomotive this is usually screwed into the top of the inner dome. However, in this case it was screwed into the wrong place in the inner dome. So using some Loctite 603, a brass bolt, and then chopping it off and cleaning it up, it will now be possible to drill a hole in the inner dome in the correct position. 
By the way, this hole did not go all the way through the inner dome. And the inner dome is not made from brass, it's made from gunmetal. It is a casting. Unfortunately, in my opinion, this part is unserviceable. Have a look at the distance between the holes around the inner dome flange. Looking at the workmanship on the rest of the engine, particularly the rolling chassis, I cannot see that the man who built the rolling chassis made this. So what's been achieved in this episode? Well, not a lot really. I remachined the regulator gland fitting to get rid of the damage, so that's a good thing. I also reamed out the bush to accept the one inch diameter tube. I used the regulator's gland fitting as a guide so I could drill through the holes to spot the face of the flange. I'll drill the backhead flange in another episode. I'm taking this boiler over to the steam workshop on Thursday for a hydraulic test, so I need to find some way of blanking off this centre hole. But I'm definitely not going to use the existing inner steam dome. I'm going to accurately make a plug using the rotary table for when I drill around the outer edge of it. And this plug will be machined to fit in the hole. Obviously I will remove the copper pipe first. And this special plug will also be used for drilling the holes around a new inner steam dome casting. So every one of the holes in the new steam dome casting will align perfectly with the ones I'm about to drill in the flange at the top of the boiler. That's going to be today's job. Today is Wednesday and it's tomorrow when I go over to the steam workshop so they can perform a hydraulic test on the boiler to make sure that it's good. Because of the cost of repairing this locomotive to a good standard, the current owner of the engine just wanted to have it repaired just so he could sell it because he's gone off steam altogether. He prefers battery electric diesels. Anyway, I put forward a suggestion to him. If the hydraulic test of the boiler was successful and I get a boiler certificate for it, I would buy the engine. I suggested a figure that I had in mind and he accepted it. So it's all down to whether or not it passes a hydraulic inspection and I will find that out tomorrow. If the boiler fails its test then there's no point in continuing the series really. But having a look at the boiler physically I'm optimistic that it will be okay. There will however be another episode when I fit the regulator and plug up this hole in the top of the boiler. But that's it for this one. I'd just like to say as always, stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.